Recently, I went to the Colorado Ren Fair in Larkspur, Colorado. Since I've already been to the largest Ren Fair in the world, I thought it would be interesting to go to another one that I've heard lots of good things about just to kind of compare the two. So if you haven't seen my video visiting the largest Ren Fair in the world, I highly recommend checking that one out before you watch this one. Now this Ren Fair was about a nine hour drive. So my friend Kiki and I decided to make a trip out of it and spend the weekend in Colorado, going two days back to back. We also met up with her boyfriend, Nick, who happened to be in town too. I was super excited to go with the both of them though because they go all out for these sort of things, as do I. So I knew going with them, I would get the best Ren Fair experience. Hello, I'm Kiki. I'm lactose intolerant and I just drank milk on accident and I want to die. <laughs> anyway. Hi lasses, are we ready? Yes. I'm ready to depart. Hi, right, everybody uh, give the camera a uh, showdown. Dun, 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 dun. I don't want to do it like this. Do it like that. Mom! Tie it like that. This top doesn't fit me. Look at this. It's like from B. No, you look like a wonderful little lass. What is this? It looks pretty great. What is this? You okay? Vibing. Oh, okay. I'm literally vibing. Yeah, man, what are you brewing? Aperol spritz on the go. On We're the go. Equal parts. One, two, three. And a little extra for good measure. This Ren Fair is located 39 miles south of Denver. And they have on average 250,000 visitors a year. And just for comparison, the largest Ren Fair in the world has around 600,000. The one thing to note though is that the parking situation here kind of sucks. Not really the parking so much, even though it is very far away from the entrance of the park. You will definitely have to walk pretty far to get there. But the other issue is there is only one road in and one road out. It's also located on a dirt road and you have to travel up a mountain to get there. So just be prepared to possibly sit in the car for a very long time in traffic if you don't get there early enough. I'm a little unsure on the acreage of this property as I've read anywhere from 35 acres to 400, which is definitely not accurate, but it's decently large and there will be a lot to do if you go multiple days in a row. That being said, you will be walking a lot, so make sure to wear comfortable shoes, bring some water, and dress appropriately as it was around 96 degrees when we went. Tickets here are $25 a day, and there are 10 stages located at this festival, along with many vendors and lots of different food options. This run fair is based on a 16th century Tudor village. And one thing about this place is that it is entirely themed to one thing, whereas the Texas run fair had different countries you could visit. I kind of compared it to Disney's Epcot because that's sort of how it felt. I personally enjoyed the theming staying consistent throughout the park because everybody's outfits matched everywhere you went as opposed to the Texas Ren Fair. You might end up in Hawaii and it just kind of made no sense. One thing I noticed is most people went all out for this event, and almost everyone was dressed up here. You could walk around, talk to anyone, speak in an accent, you can sword fight with strangers, you can trade little trinkets for fun just to make friends, and you can even get married here, which we end up doing later in the video. I will do my love a power. Fountain. 
I'd say that this Ren Faire was the most similar to LARPing without actually LARPing because most people seem to be pretty into it. I don't know how to do it. Lanchin has been challenged to a duel. What does she have? Does she have what it takes? This is the sort of affair where you get out as much as you put in. So if you aren't a social butterfly, your experience here might be subpar at best. Death he shall be your sweet dream tonight. A man, a myth, and a legend. Oh my gosh, wait, look at this one. <laughs> oh, yes, they're so cute. Do you sell these or do you just make them for fun? I just made them last minute. Oh, like, they're last so night. sweet. So <laughs> you got a mushroom child? I have a Oh, the baby. Your sword, sir, where is it from? Do you want to touch it? <laughs> Hi! I, I, I would like to touch your sword. <laughs> it is merely oh, I see. a foam. Yours is much less ahead. convincing. Yeah. You need to work on I'm your sword game. This is foam. That's foam? No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah, this is foam. It's not. Let me touch That's your sword. So it's it's Ooh, totally no, foam. Got, <laughs> definitely <Ooh>. foam. <laughs> that is very sexy, oh, though. Yeah. You know what we call that? BSE. <laughs> Big sword <laughs> energy. Oh, goody. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Another one. It's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. That's LSE. Little sword energy. Little sword energy. <laughs> yeah, I like right. that. <laughs> yes, yes. This one's not so, not so cool for us. Now moving on into the shows. There are a variety of shows that happen all throughout the day, and there are also little side stages that allow a more personable experience with the performer. And I liked these better just because you could learn more information about what they were doing because there wasn't this giant audience. necessarily pagan, but they often don't start out as Christmas carols. For example, Good King Wenceslas was set to a piece of church music, but from Finland that had nothing to do with Christmas. And of course, it wouldn't be a Ren Fair without a good old joust. But if a joust is not your thing, there are other activities that happen throughout the Ren Fair that do cost money, anywhere from a couple bucks to ten dollars at most. There's also some other things that you can do within the Ren Fair that don't cost money, like going to see some birds and they tell you facts about them. They actually have to amputate his left wing. Mostly both of us. That was the only way to save his life. So he only has one wing and it is very hard for him to find. So. There is a huge parade where you can, again, talk to all of the people and LARP with them. <laughs> <laughs> to me! I will find his head! No, no, we want all of him! Oh, okay, I will find all of him. Yes, yes. And there's a petting zoo with an array of animals. This was one of my favorite parts of the park, just because there were so many different animals to hang out with. Oh, and you can get married for free. We're down at here today, so the fan Padre can marry this guy Sir Nick. Uh -huh. so this lady. Sir Kinky. Oh. <laughs> Slot twist. All that time. You're sure this one no one wants to marry? There are many out there for you. you know, and many choices. Hey, hey, hey. He's got a big sword. Look at the size of my sword. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, okay. And his mustache, obviously. <laughs> and your thick mustache. <laughs> By the power vested in somebody here. Hey. For real, uh, for sure, a man of God, for real. 
Yes. For sure. For, For sure. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> You're married. Yay! You're married. Yay! 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 <laughs> now it's time to talk about the shops because of course this is also a marketplace so if you are looking for those specialty items to go with a halloween costume cosplay or you just want to wear it full time this is the place to do it and also support small businesses we are back with day two of the ren fair as you can tell i'm in my vikings outfit <laughs> and it's super hot out. We've kind of explored a little bit of the shops here and there's a lot of unique stores. So the one that's right behind me sells a lot of um, jewelry made from bones. I've never seen that before. There's also someone that does hand carved bows and arrows. There is also a guy that does some 3D spheres, glass blowing spheres. I don't know how to explain it. I will show you. And there's also a ton of clothing, armor, you know, all that good stuff. And there is stuff that is designated just for children too that I've noticed, which is really nice. It's not just for adults, although I think adults have more fun here, if I had to guess. Agreed. There are a lot of shops here. You're going to find a lot of clothing, a lot of accessories, a lot of home decor, and even plants, which I thought was interesting. And I feel like I saw more decor and accessories over clothing items, but maybe I just wasn't looking hard enough, but I felt like there was a very unique selection of items to choose from if you were buying, along with price ranges. With the Todd Mission Texas Ren Fair, everything was very overpriced. And that's probably just because they have the title, the world's largest Ren Fair, but I felt like this one was much more affordable. Okay, maybe not the clothes, but the accessories and a lot of the decor was pretty affordable. And the other one's all the way home. What's his name? Whoa. This one Come is Penelope. You All of them are handmade by the same the family for, for the hour. last... You're not going anywhere. I'm not doing the math, but Come since 1977. <laughs> These are hand forged swords. These are legitimately sharp as hell. They will send you to the hospital as quick as possible. So be very careful when handling them. But they're absolutely beautiful. This beast, $750. Pick this up? No, you're going to pick this up. And you're going to let me know how it feels. $2,000. This is... The qu this is to determine if you are a true queen or not. Do you have the, bow the power? I cannot lift, okay. Do you have the power? No! Come on! Oh! Yeah! Not with one hand, but... Fair. <laughs> so, yes. There was only one thing I was interested in finding here, and that was these military type jackets, these pirate jackets. I'm obsessed with these, but for some reason, they are really hard to find outside of the Rin Fairs. So I did find this store. It was called Beowulf, and they had such beautiful jackets. They are all handmade, so you are going to pay a pretty pity for these but the thing is it's something you're going to get really good use out of i mean maybe it depends on the person but me personally would get very good use out of and it would hold up forever i think it's a good investment i just thought these pieces were so beautiful they are all the same style but all different types of fabrics and colors so you can get them customized however you would like the other store that I found was this very unique hat store, and this one was called the Blonde Swan. These are all custom made hats in real leather. There was a variety of different styles from a pirate hat to a privateer hat to a wizarding hat, and these range anywhere from $150 to $450. So a little bit more on the pricey side, but they will hold up a very long time. Blanchin has asked me to go over like the cost of my armor and overall setup 
and it is a lot, but I will preface it up by saying I just kind of like every couple of months piece things together. So like one piece and then another piece and whatnot. Starting with the tabard, can't remember the name of the Etsy shop. I'm gonna have to link it below, but it was 175 and it is made out of natural linen, but 175 is a lot. So I understand and that's why I say I like save up and then once every couple of months I can splurge on what I want. The armor I got off of Etsy from Fawn Forge, I believe, and also a lot. I mean, so these three pieces right here, we've got the chest piece and the two shoulders. That was like 275, I believe. And then I have the belt that was about 150, maybe 160. And then the bracers, which are my favorite part here. They are um, amazing quality and whatnot, but they were also about 180, I believe. And like I said, I purchased these all like very separately. And uh, just over the course of like a year and a half, I was able to accumulate these um, to make them into what they are. Here I have this flask that I thrifted. It's actually like a 1940s World War II flask, which is amazing. And then I built this leather little case for it. So I cut this and then sewed it all together. The sword is a Witcher 3 sword. It's a foam sword, which is super nice. So I can bring it in here and like wield it without having to uh, lock it up. The scabbard is also made by them. And I think I got it all through. Kalmaseel has the sword. I didn't buy it through them, but I did buy the sheath through them. Obviously everybody knows them. The boots I got off Etsy, they, I don't recommend. Honestly, they were like 75 or hundred bucks. They're not the best quality. I'm in the hunt of some better boots. And then I just have these thrifted, um, they're actually like dress pants, low key from like probably the sixties. I actually have a cape back here and this is a, just a little Halloween cape that uh, incandescent Kiki thrifted for for, uh, a couple dollars. There's a lot of money in this suit um, or in this outfit. I would probably say it's close to like 800 or a thousand dollars. I think everything's kind of DIY, right? Like this cape Kiki made out of some fabric. I think she got that off Amazon actually. Really? Yeah. This shirt is thrifted. It has these really nice bell sleeves, which is great for the Renaissance Fair. It's also in a paisley print. I've got some jewelry on. It just looks very armor-like. I have this silver necklace I attached to this braided leather belt. It's just um, kind of shoved inside of it in a DIY way. It's a sash, kind of. That's, that's what the vibe is. And then this little thing is holding the tankard and it's a sleeve of a jacket. So another DIY, a random piece of fur that I wrapped around here with some ribbon, a leather belt, pleather belt that is falling apart with some more silver accessories, foam sword. Am I gonna get yelled at? No. It's not, it's not real guys, but it's really nice. And to attach it, just put a piece of fabric right here, tied it and you just let it hang. Super simple. This is a DIY project that Kiki did and it's made of a Christmas stocking. And this skirt is from Ross. It's very fairy like. It's simple, it's a normal item that you can find anywhere. And I'm just wearing Amazon leather combat boots. Yeah, this yeah. is very expensive. I think it's made by an Etsy seller. It's real leather. This is, I think, around 375. I got this from Etsy from a place called the Ironwoods Shop. It came with shoulders and it was like 250 or 300 dollars. Can't remember. This shirt came from Retro Fairy on Instagram. You bought it for me. How much was it? It came with that shirt, a skirt, and a belt, I believe, and a total it was like $180. Thrifted this for like $6. I bought these shorts in Malaysia. I think they were like $5. They're, I don't like them because the buttons are crooked and I think it looks weird, but no one else notices apparently. Thrifted both of my belts. I made both of these straps and then this is a purse that I took the strap off of. It came from Hobby Lobby. And I feel like it was like 10, 15 dollars. This potion bottle is from Amazon. I think it was like 15 dollars for two of them. This strap came from Embercraft Creations on Instagram. Same with this. Okay, strap that's who this, this is. Pouch. Embercraft Creations. They are yeah. amazing, and they also did your owl mask. The shoes came from the thrift store. I believe they were six dollars. This is from Myth and Fay, and so are these earrings, and they're brand new. And she sent them to me, and I don't know how much they are, so I'm not helpful. But that's where they're from. <laughs> Now we are moving on into my favorite part of the video, which is the food and drink portion. The reason it's my favorite is because, well, food, 
And because the price difference between this one and the world's largest Ren Faire is so drastic that they need an award for these low prices. So of course, throughout the park, you have lots of different food options, but I will say they do organize the food options into sections of the park. So that's just something to keep in mind when you find something you like, it's only going to be there. They also have one water refill station and they allow you to bring in your own water. So I got steak on a stick. It was $7.50. A little more expensive than I thought it was gonna be just for this amount, but whatever. Mm. It's a, a little tough for me to bite through, but I feel like it could be cheaper. We're gonna get more food and see. Let's see what else we can get to eat. This is my potion of inebriation, and I'm putting it in my Orange Julius, which cost me $3.50. I got fried pickles. It's $5 for this little boat, and they recommended some ranch. Is it worth it? Listen, I'm gonna be real with you. Pickles are my favorite food. I don't know how I feel about fried pickles. Oh, I got the uh, sweet potatoes with onion rings. You legitimately can't go wrong. And it's delicious with ketchup. Four fifty each, maybe five. Good. Oh, those onions are insane. Yeah. I think it was five fifty. Do you remember? Five fifty. I think it was five fifty. Yeah, this is a lot of. That's a lot of meat. Yeah, it is. Compared to the steak that was seven and I had one little piece. True. I get three chicken fingers, essentially. And then I got the pickles too because they were so good. So far, this appears to be the best bang for your buck. Like, if you got two of these. Oh, good. Yeah. Look at this guy. So there's a pickle man here. Apparently a pickle man is something that's at almost every renaissance fair. The pickle man. There's no coconuts here, so they don't have that. Apparently that's a Texas thing. But we do got our pickles. The only thing better would be if I was dual wielding two pickles. Oh, all right, fair enough. We bought the Angry Orchard Cider, six fifty each. Yeah, six fifty. I just walked up and I said, "What has the highest alcohol content?" Because we're trying to get a job done here. Two Angry Orchards, it was, and uh, they measured it out and then filled it up in our nice little uh, tankard. Tankard. I just ate my fish sticks. I'm still a bigger fan of the chicken, but it was a better deal than getting the steak because it was one piece. This was two pieces of fish and it was decent I mean it's pretty freaking hot outside so it wasn't my ideal snack but you have fries and you have the fish yeah I'd say it's worth it um Nicholas what, what did you this? get this is called the baked I got potato the chicken wrap honey mustard for seven dollars maybe 750 but like look at the girth it was really big it's it's doable so if you're hungry this is the way to go taste wise it's good Nothing amazing, but like for seven dollars, like I'll take it. My baked potato was five, and you get the option of sour cream, butter, and cheese. You can have all of them, you can have none of them. I just got some butter and a light cheese, but it's pretty good. And I never complain about potatoes, so I'm vibing. You got this. I got, yeah, it's just like a sausage with sauerkraut, and it was seven. We're gonna try it. I don't know if it's good. <laughs> Show, did you make your mask? I did. I mm. bought it here actually. It's very like, pretty. I think the chicken wings though are the best are thing to get. Chicken fingers? Same diff. It is good. It's really tasty. It's really good. But yeah. So the Ren Fair is over. It ended up closing at six, but I guess they don't technically kick everyone out until eight. My thoughts on this place is that this is more like a small village. The one in Texas is pretty spread out. It's a lot it covers more acres of land, of course, but this is kind of a hike. So be prepared to walk quite a bit up and down hills. And when it comes to like the jousting match, you sit on the ground and there's not a lot of shade there. It's pretty hot during the time of year that this is going on. And as for the shops, lots of the same type of thing that you'll see made by different creators, but there are different sections for different types of food. I don't really like that because then you have to walk like really far away to get chicken and then really far away to get seafood. It's separated. So lots of walking and the parking situation kind of sucks because you have to walk very far, in my opinion, to get to your car in the hot heat. But because it is like the way it's set up, 
there's lots of more places to walk, so it's not as packed as the Texas Ren Fair. So that's a plus. That being said, I think because this is a smaller Ren Fair, it makes for a more intimate setting with a lot of like-minded people who are interested in dressing up, role-playing, becoming friends, hanging out, and the Texas Ren Fair was much larger, so there was more to do but less people committing to the role-playing part, which in my head is the best part of it. So it really depends on what you are wanting to get out of the experience. All that to say though, people do make a big difference in going to these things, so if you invite one person that's not into it and you are, it just, you know, it doesn't work. So make sure you choose the right people to go with, because I know if I came with anyone other than Kiki, I probably wouldn't have had as much fun. But thanks so much for hanging out with me while I took you on my trip to the Colorado Ren Fair. Hopefully this gave you some insight if you are planning or thinking about going yourself. And I hope to see you at the next Colorado Ren Fair.